and welcome back to Calculus 2. We are going to talk about disk and washer method, which uh, is a method to obtain volume of an object which has radial symmetry, which means object must be obtained by rotating... <coughs> Me, <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> the object must be created by rotating the function around the axis, right? So, objects like bottles and cups and um, those fancy water bottles, I presume water is inside, it could be anything. Uh, then we have a light bulb, a pipe baseball bat, right? Those are the objects that you obtain by rotating function f of x around uh, about either x or y axis. So if you take just a line like this, which is a linear line, you can calculate the slope and the formula and all of that stuff for this line, and rotate this around x-axis, you will get on the other side the same, and then the object would create, the object you create would be a cone. So it's amazing that we can calculate volume of a cone just by figuring out the equation of the linear line, and then if we know the formula, which we are going to write down, I remember what I told you that for the first exam you will be memorizing about 10 formulas, and then that would be, uh, that would be it. So, we can create a cone. This function over here is y equal mx plus b. If you take a line segment, like that, and rotate around x-axis, what do you get? Yes? Section of a cone? Section of a cone, sure, but it's the object that you would use on a daily basis, probably. A cup. A cup. Can you please model that for everyone? Thank you very much. All that for everyone. Thank you, see? That cup well, that cup is actually rotation on the y-axis, so we're not going to ask. No, no, we're not going to ask for x-axis. I could. Have you ever went to the restaurant, you ask a server who's carrying the tray what time it is? Yeah. Don't, because there might be a hot soup on it. Anyway, so we're not going to ask for x in this case. Um, if you rotate, you will get the same line on the other side. It will create these two round and you get a cup one of the project problems might be this one where I ask you in a problem to go to your favorite coffee tea or whatever shop that has these cups and just get a cup cafeteria has them right and then you actually work out the problem you will measure the cup which will tell you the equation for this line segment. Height of the cup is A to B that you will need for your integral. And um, you will be able to compute the volume in centimeters or inches cubed, which you can convert to fluid ounces. And then you can check the validity of the claim when they say this cup is, you know, 16 ounces of liquid. Oh, wait, we're in the United States. 32 ounces. It's a bucket. It's not a cup at that point. Right? Um, and then if you do the calculation and you check and you find it's not, well, then you don't need school anymore. That was it. That's the last, right? I get six people got it. All right, fine. Anyway. Other objects, as long as you know what the function is, you would be able to create the object by rotating object 
around x-axis. So what's this one? That's the baseball bat, exactly, right? I don't really know what the function is. We'll call this a b of x for baseball bat. Um, but there is some kind of function which would fit this line. And then when you plug that function into the integral formula we're going to learn, you would have the volume of the baseball bat. Why is the volume of the baseball bat important? Because with volume and density, you can calculate the mass. You don't really want a 70-pound baseball bat. It's not really useful. I mean, it's useful in certain cases, but not the baseball. 70-pound baseball bat could be used in ways. So, it's exercise, you know, the curls. Yeah, there we go. see? I know of it. I don't do any of it. I just know. Anyway, so if you, if you rotate any function, so let's take a look at the formula which we are going to use to calculate volume. Volume is 3D. We need x, y, and z. Uh, but we are only going to use x and y because one of those dimensions will be taken um, as a square because all of our objects are round. See, the property of a circle, this is one of the cool things that you probably missed in your education so far. Square is a special rectangle because they have the same features apart from square having all sides the same length. So A, 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 and in this case, A, A, B, and B. So square is a special case of a rectangle, and all of their formulas work the same way. Perimeter is A plus A plus A, which is four A's, and over here, perimeter is two A plus two B. If you say that B is going to be the size A, well, then the formulas would be the same because it would be the same object. So square is a special. Now, for area, it's A squared, which is A times A, and over here for area, you have a times b. Again, if b is a, then you get a squared. So you get a square. So technically, this object is the boss for the whole family. And then you have the special case. If a is equal to b, you end up with a square. So that's a special case. It's not a new object. It's just a rectangle whose sides are all the same. So we call it a special name because we can. The same feature is shared between the circle and ellipse. And if you take a look at their equations, over here, you have your radius r, radius r, and the area of um, pi r squared. For ellipse, you have a and b as major and minor radius, right? And area is pi AB. If B is A, then you would have a circle, not an ellipse. Now, in the very last chapter of Calc 2, this is going to come back. And we'll talk more about this when we do parametric equations for ellipse and a circle, which sets up your calculus 3 later on for polar coordinates, cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Those of you who are into mechanical and electrical engineering and not computer science will be taking that class. Um, I always applaud your intellectual curiosity. If you are computer science, take your Calc 3 class. It's fine. You can. It's not forbidden. If you look at the equation of the line which governs the, 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 the black line, the outline of a circle and the ellipse, you have x squared plus y squared equal r squared. For ellipse, you have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. What happens if a equals b equals r? You get this equation. So again, ellipse is the boss in terms of a shape. Circle is a special case of ellipse. 
where the two radii a and b are the same, all of the equations collapse into this. Why is this important? It's important because you see that in x direction and the y in x direction and in the y direction, you have the same length r, which means that those two dimensions can collapse into just one variable r, and then you just have to worry about the height or the length of the object. So it's a two-dimensional uh, calculation, and we don't need to involve calculus three. We can actually take care of the volume of these kind uh, by uh, simply uh, working out uh, integral in um, dx or, or dy. All right, so now let's take a look at the situation. We have some kind of a function, f of x. Um, I don't know, we're creating a vase, I guess, or whatever in this case. So we have the function between a and b. We are going to rotate this around x-axis, which would create the same shape on the other side and when you rotate this between A and B you are getting this round shape so it could be some kind of vase or something nice what is the volume volume is given by the formula pi integral from A to B of f of x squared dx. So now, to understand this formula, we are going to immediately compare this to a volume of a cylinder and I'll put the cylinder also horizontal. I will give it A and B, and I will give it radius R. When you have a cylinder, the volume of the cylinder would be area of the base times its height or the length. Height is between A and B, in this case, because it's sideways. And this one is a circle which would be in a base if you stand this up. So volume for the cylinder will be pi r squared times the height. How many dimensions do we have? Well, r times r, that's two dimensions, times h, three dimensions. So, we're good to go. This is 3D because we have three dimensions in a formula. Pi is a constant, does not count as a dimension. Awesome. Let's take a look and see that this formula and this formula are the same thing. Do we have pi and pi? Do we have radius squared? Why is this radius squared? Because it stretches from the, from the axis of rotation doesn't radius stretch from the center to the, to the outer edge? So if you are to take this object like this and take a look at its function, which is this curved line over here, the radius for the circle, that it's, if I'm to take the sword and cut it this way, right? There will be a radius in the middle. That radius is growing as we are moving to, towards the, the fatter part of the bottle. And then it's going to stay the same in this region here. Over here, the radius is smaller and smaller and smaller because axis of rotation pokes through the center of the bottle or your cups or your bottles or the, the nice pink one over there. So anything that it's what we say radially symmetric, right? When you have the circle in one of the cross sections, you will be able to put that axis through for rotation, and then the radius is measured from that axis outwards. So that radius always hits the function. 
So radius is function squared. And then dx. If you remember your calculus 1, you will remember that your delta x, which is actually dx, is given as b minus a over n, right? There's your b and a. Those are your limits um, between which, right, the object, we observe the object between a and b. On the so you can see that these two formulas are the same, except the formula in black, right, is just four cylinder. Uh, there is no curvature to any of the sides, where if you allow radius to be a function, then you can create baseball bats and light, light bulbs and cups and everything else, not just straight pipes. So that's our formula that we are going to use to compute the um, volume in respect to now, I, oh, I forgot to write this, it's important to add, when it rotates around x. Clearly, when I stand objects up and rotate this line around y-axis, I will create the cup. So now this function over here is x equals f of y, and we are rotating around y, which will give us a dy rotation. And the integral for this one, let's go blue, would be pi c to d f of y squared dy for a rotation around y axis. So you have a formula for, you have the, for, why is this purple? You have the formula for x rotation, formula for y rotation, it's the same formula, obviously. You just need to be careful um, to express the function in terms of y, because your limits are c and d, those are y limits, and you're, you, you are integrating in respect to y. So let's take a look at an example of this. You want to create, now to calculate the volume for square root of x between 1 and 4. So when this creates the shape, you get a cereal bowl out of this, right? It has the flat uh, circle on the, on the bottom on which you are, like a disc, that you are going to stand the object on, which is cereal bowl. Then it has these curved edges that come up, and then the top is again circle so it's a round shape yeah I know it's sideways but that's okay say you're on an international space station you can eat in any position you want it's fine so what you have is your f of x function is square root of x and you are on 1 to 4 range uh, here for uh, as a and b so these are your a and b well since you are rotating on x-axis you have to use the dx so rotation on x will prompt a dx integral for disk method guess what's next section shell method where dx uh, where uh, rotation on x is going to be dy. So, woohoo. I mean, we, we're not just going to leave it here, right? Going to confuse things a little bit. So, we start with the volume. Ah, don't forget the pi. The calories for the day. So, we have a and, uh, a and b. That's our 1 and 4. Then we have our square root of x, which is the function. And we need to square that. Oh, it's going to work out nice. 
And then we have dx, not there for decoration, remember the last class. So now pi integral 1 to 4 of x dx because algebra kicked in and uh, killed off that square root and a square. And now we'll just integrate, so copy pi. Don't forget that pi, it's just, it's just minus 1 when you forget it. Um, but it throws your answer 3.14 times. That means that every volume you calculate will be three times smaller than it is. Which I think if you're calculating, let's say, you're working at a factory and you need to calculate, you know those huge tanks they have outside to store whatever, and you are the engineer who forgets the pi in this formula, you get the three times uh, smaller volume than it's supposed to. It's a few million dollars, I mean, it's not a big deal, right? Except the job market will not be too happy with you once you have to reapply. So, yeah, put the pie there. And, and, and remind me when I, when I forget it, because this over here is fake work, so I don't have to worry about it. You go into industry, so it's important for you, for me. I just sit here, and then I leave <laughs> at the end. So. So make sure you tell me that I forgot pi. Um, integral of x is what? X squared over two. Excellent. x squared over 2. See, you, you even did this for me. It's like, I, what do I do? You integrate for me and everything. And now we compute this. So 4 squared is 16. So we have a pi. 16 divided by 2 is 8 minus a half. Right? And uh, if you want the decimals, you can punch this in the calculator and get it. Um, I'm just going to call this, uh, what's this, 15 pi over 2. Uh, 15 times 3 is roughly 45 and stuff, so they will call it 46 and 46 because of 3.14, right? So call it 46 and then cut 46 in 2. It's about 23 units cubed. I don't know what the units are. I never said centimeters, inches, or anything, so I'm just going to say units cubed, because you, it's important to, to know that, um, to know that. And, and that's the way you, you deal with these problems, whether they stand upright, in which case you will be replacing all x's with y's and calculating in terms of y. Uh, integration works the same way, it's just a different letter. So your y integral is y squared over 2. It's the same thing. And uh, you have the um, objects that can stand upright or sideways. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to ask you to now prove the formula for volume of a cone. You should remember the volume of the cone from your Calculus 1 lecture on related rates when you had a conical pile of sand or corn or whatever. You know, stuff is coming off of the conveyor belt. When it falls down, it creates a cone which grows in time. And you calculated related rates between the volume and whatever other things. Well, and you had the formula for the cone. Now, if you don't remember, obviously, you're going to kind of look it up now, right, under the desk, because I won't be paying attention. Um, you, you know the specs, right? To, to start the problem, you just need this line whose height is age, and it goes R out. And you, that's all you need to calculate the formula for the volume. I, come on, Greeks did this. 2,000 years ago with a stick and a rope. So let's see if you can do it with the satellite connection and the things that you have available today. Or the arts are lost and we can all go home.
Uh, this is a great time to meet people next to you. Say hi, my name is, and how far are you with this problem? <laughs> what do I do next? This would be the first problem to star for the situation when someone says, hey, what's new? We can live with this. Good conversation starter. Oh, by the way, let's talk about this. You don't know what to talk about. People talk about the weather. It will kill me now. That's why I have to leave my country so I'm start talking about the weather. So I have to move. It's really clicky. Can you scroll just a little? Scroll, scroll just a little. Yeah. Like one more, one more pixel? One more pixel. There Perfect. we go. <laughs> what do you need to see? The formula? Just, yeah, those last two lines. Oh, the, the, the yeah. calculation? Yeah, right there. Oh. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. That's the. Yeah. Uh, if you follow the stream on the computer in the desk or the site, it has a 30 second delay and you can actually scroll through back and forth. Because now the rest of the classroom can't see the problem. And I'm just pointing to see his fault. <laughs> he asked for, I mean, I'm not going to say no to a student. So we are rotating around y-axis. It is uh, the height is zero to age. The radius is uh, whatever you get there. Fifteen seconds left. No pressure. All right. The first order of business is to understand that we are rotating around y, which means we will need dy formula. That's the first thing. Next, I need the equation. 
I need a function which involves x and a y. And uh, because it's a dy, I will need it to be x as a function of y. So we are used to y equal mx plus b, and then we have to massage it to get x equals everything else. So we start from, the, from here, realizing that this is y equals slope is uh, height divided by going forward. So that's negative age over r because it is we go age we go age up and then forward r but then we're going down it's falling to the right so it's a negative slope x plus age because that's the y intercept right is at age so this is our our function and we need to solve this for x because we need x as the f of y so we solve this for x, so y minus h is equal to negative h over r x, from where x is equal to, we multiply uh, this to the uh, right-hand side, we'll put negative r over h times y minus h, and um, when you distribute, x is equal to negative r over h y minus and minus gives you plus and then h and h cancels we just get r so this is the function that we will be using inside the integral the volume is equal to pi integral uh, c to d in this case 0 to h uh, are our limits uh, on the y-axis because we are doing the dy integral if you do dy integral you better have y limits so c and d they're on the y-axis so zero to h is to get our uh, if you want the representative rectangle from last class we talked about it uh, here is the dy and it starts on the zero level and goes all the way up to h so zero to h on our um, dy uh, we have our function which we have we will have to square so we'll have to live through that uh, plus r squared and then we have our dy so all we need to do is to integrate this keeping in mind that r and age are parameters so they're just numbers the only variable we have is y and um, that's not a big deal but let's first deal with um, we first have to deal with um, square of the binomial so when you square the first you get r squared over age squared y squared then the first times the second times 2, so that's going to be minus 2r, no, r times r is r squared, holy nightmare, r squared over, oh no, but there is a 2, I was right, 2r squared over h, y, and then plus r squared, dy. Observe that there is r squared everywhere, kick it out so we have r squared pi integral 0 to h and now you have uh, 1 over h squared y squared minus uh, this uh, r is out so we have 2 over h y plus 1 dy because r squared is factored out and now it's uh, by the pi outside um, again, the only variable is y. R and age are numbers. R could be 3 and age could be 5. So we don't worry about those uh, letters in terms of variables. And uh, all I need to do now is to integrate uh, in terms of y. So uh, I get 1 over age squared. That's a constant. You copy the constant. And we have y cubed over 3 minus 2 over h, constant, copy it, and we get y squared over 2, and then plus y computed from 0 to h. r squared pi, and when I plug in h, I get 1 over h squared 
h cubed over 3 minus 2 and 2 cancel. I have 1 over h and then h squared, let's say h squared, plus h minus 0, 0, 0. So 0 is not going to contribute anywhere because it's just going to kill all of the terms. y equals 0 multiplied by all of the other stuff is just 0. So r squared pi, what do we get? These guys cancel, you get h over 3. Uh, these guys cancel, you get minus h plus h. Well, now they cancel. And there it is, 1 third pi r squared h, which is exactly what the volume of the cone is, because hopefully you remember from your uh, previous class, if you haven't uh, figured it out before, when you are categorizing all of the volume formulas, they fall in one of the three bins for uh, possible shapes. Here are the three bins. Now, I teach this in uh, related rates. If you're interested in more detail, take a look at uh, 3.11 lecture on my channel and you will find it. Uh, here are the objects that are a cylinder like this or a prism like a cube and so on. And all of these have a volume as base times the height. Base meaning area of the base. Then you have the objects that are spiky. I call them spiky objects, like cones and pyramids uh, are in the same mix. So if they, they have a spike on top, and their volumes are always one-third BH. And in its own category, the perfect shape, a ball. We call it a sphere, which has volume of four-thirds pi r cubed. So these are the three categories for objects that you are computing the volume of by having geometry formula from 2,000 years ago. If you have any of these regular shapes, anything else that it's irregular, we are going to use calculus 2 or calculus 3 to calculate the vo volume. This is the stuff that we learn in whatever grade, and uh, we keep refreshing it until we learn enough calculus so that we can forget all of these. So now you see over here the cone, it's spiky object, therefore it's one third area of the base times the height. One third area of the base, which is circle, times the height of the cone. So that is the formula for the volume of the cone. So that's a little note aside. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to perform a magic over here so you don't, don't have to worry about I'm going to move this down to give more space and put the red box over there for this for this proof. Great. So now we would like to improve a little bit on this formula because we can um, do better. You see, technically what we have done so far is we, we cheated a little bit. First off, this cone we calculated is a solid block of a material. There is no hollow inside, you can't, this is not an ice cream cone, right? Because ice cream cone is empty inside for ice cream, right? So the other object that we talked about earlier, this cereal bowl, this is not a cereal bowl. I was trying to help you, you know, visualize this. That's a solid block of whatever you have. There is no hole inside, right, to put the cereal in. This is flat, and that's flat. Both of these are just flat, and everything inside is solid. Is there a way for us to come up with an object to calculate the volume, the object that actually has a hole inside so that we can fit the stuff in, right? And you are going to achieve that if you rotate two functions around the axis. Because 
between the two functions, you are going to have the material out of which the object is made. Plastic, very thin plastic for these bottles that you and cups that you guys have. So a little bit of a metal or a plastic, and um, you know a millimeter maybe, and then insides are actually all empty. So we would like to take a look at the volume uh, for that. The first uh, first thing to so let's take a look at problem 28, and that problem will define a general formula for this, which is called the washer method. The washer method is actually the boss equation, and then you step down into the disk method as a particular case when you don't need two functions. So here is the difference. You see, I can go and just rotate the square root of x around the x-axis, and that would create a solid object. That would create a solid object uh, that you can't place anything inside. The contrast next, next to it, I still have the square root of x function, but I'm also going to put, let's say, this linear line. So on top, it's going to be square root of x, and on the bottom, let's say it's, I don't know, one-sixth x. So let's say these are the two functions you have. So what would they calculate? Well, in first case, you are calculating the volume as you rotate both of these on x-axis. You are calculating the volume for the entire um, piece as it rotates, the fun as, as the function rotates around, it's just the whole piece is a solid block of material. Plastic, metal, wood, I don't care what, what um, chemistry you're using. Now on the other side, as you rotate, you are rotating only this piece. And that is going to be the material. So what is this technically? From the outside, it's going to look like a cereal bowl because it's round and it looks like right, that, that's kind of parabolic shape. On the inside, you are going to have a cone hole, cone size hole, right? Because the inside, as you can see, creates, draw a Pac-Man over here. So there will be a circle there, that one over there, like that. And uh, this would be the cross section. Uh, this is not going to be a cereal bowl, first of all, because it's not a conical cut inside. You would never be able to clean this this point here, right? You would just have a, you know, three years old milk in there. Um, and uh, obviously, it's not flat on this end either, so it would wobble. <laughs> it's not. So this is not a cereal bowl. But maybe it's some kind of abstract piece of art that no one understands. And you take a look at this. The inside is empty, but it's cone. On the outside, it looks like, like a parabola. And what you are calculating is if you use the, the washer method, the washer method, which we are going to learn now, will calculate the amount of material which takes the the amount of material that it takes you to make this. Uh, if you just take the disk method for the cone, you will calculate the volume of the inside, which is how much stuff you can, you can put inside this object. So the red computes the material, which is what engineers are interested in, because when you are designing a piece, you need to know how much material is used because once you start the mass production, but you don't go, yeah, just give us two truckloads. You know, it's, it's, we're making 100,000 units. <laughs> no, two truckloads could be, you know, a million dollars. So, of material, you know, importing pure diamonds or something. So, one of these, right, calculates the amount of material to make the object the other method would calculate how much stuff that object can hold inside. 
Now, what is the washer method? And why is it called the washer? Well, we'll figure that out later. First off, the washer method has two functions. So I'm going to draw this again, and I'm going to call the top F and the bottom G, and we are going to have our DX stretched between the two. Well, hello, last class. Didn't we learn last class about area between two curves? You take the area between two curves, and when you spin that one, you will get the volume of the material that would take to create the object. So now when you spin this one around, you will get here in blood, because this is important, pi A to B. Again, you have your A and your B. So pi A to B, and now you're going to have F squared minus G squared and all of that in parentheses dx and you will say rotation is on x and then you box this as a formula this one will make a cool tattoo right i don't know we'll have better formulas actually hold on don't 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 tattoo anything yet Change all x's into y's, and you have your vertical formula. So here it is, the blue companion. V equals pi c to d f squared of y minus g squared of y dy for rotation around y. And that would be the vertical case. And now you go and you figure things out the same way you did like in the last lecture where you guys um, had the top minus bottom or right minus left. Or if you remember the way we said all of these formulas are the same formula if you remember far away minus close by because one function will be further away from the axis of rotation and the other will be closer to the axis of rotation. So further away minus close by. Don't forget to square them though, because they have to be squared uh, individually. So problem 28 in the book has rotation on x axis. Oh, I'm using the that's probably not 28 in this. It's a problem. All right, it's a problem. That is in the book, so I'm just going to solve. It's on a homework page. Uh, so if you find this uh, problem, which contains fourth root of x and um, y equals x on the bottom, and if you find that problem, uh, it should give you a picture as well. Then shout out the number and I'll, I'll, I'll place it here. So it, maybe they removed it. Uh, oh, actually, you have it. Nice. 24. Yeah, it's 24. 24? Yeah, see, that's how we get new edition, right? It used to be 28, now it's 24. It's a, it's a four difference. <laughs> well, 260. <laughs> $40 difference. What is, what's wrong with you now? <laughs> All right. So, no, actually, between the two editions, they added 17% um, of the problems in this, uh, like, a mid spice range because the, the first two editions of this book uh, had a um, few very easy problems and then just burning pits of hell right after that. There was no medium in between. Right, so now they, they, they claim they added, uh, so you do have a lot more problems, and this is one of the cheap problems. So see, it's kind of pushed from 28 to 24, and they added probably after that sometime. Anyway, so we have this problem, and um, yeah, you just apply the formula. Top function squared minus bottom function squared, and just plow through calculations. Let's see what you guys get. 
You have the formula, it's the red one. You have the top squared minus bottom squared and you just go from there. Uh, fourth root of x and x. Okay. Now remember what you have to do to find limits. You you did the homework, I hope. What have you what have you done to find the limits? You set them equal to each other. Good. So there will be some algebra to come up with a and b by setting these two functions equal to each other. I mean, you can guess by looking at the picture immediately what they are, but you can also do the calculation too. Spelled out the uh, section where I find the integral u. So, how to go smoothly from calc 1. So, uh, I forgot to open the practice homework uh, for prep for calc 2. Uh, and that practice homework would be 4, 9, 5, 2, and 5, 5 from Calc 1. So that homework is not counted for a grade, but technically 
That's your review and prep for the first half of calculus. We talked about it last class, that these three sections are your lifeline for survival, right, um, of Calc 2 first half. And then we'll have those three sections from Calc 1 for second half of the course. So I'm going to open, in addition to the homework, which is 626364, for next week, I'm also going to open these three sections so you guys can practice um, the skill that you need because all we do is, sh I told you, you are memorizing about 10 to 15 formulas, whatever the number is, and that's your exam one. The rest is solving them using these three sections. And if you can't do that, obviously you won't be able to do any of the problems on the first exam. So Calc 1 skills from those three sections need to be flying. And um, then you just memorize the formulas from, um, from Calc 2, and there's your first exam. Let's talk about this problem. First off, rotation on x means dx, which means we have one of those um, horizontal problems. So if it's a horizontal problem, it is going to be top minus bottom. I need to equal these two equations to figure out where they intersect. Well, clearly they intersect at zero on the left-hand side, so A is zero. And there I say clearly on the other side they intersect at one, because fourth root of one is one, and that's equal to one. But we can also calculate that. If I hit both of these to the fourth power, I will eliminate the fourth root. So this is your intermediate algebra now solving the equation. So now you have x equals x to the fourth. And the way you solve this is you subtract x equals zero, factor out x for x cubed minus one equal to zero, from where x is equal to zero, x cubed is equal to 1, and when you cube root both sides, you get x equals to 1. Cube root does not have plus and minus. Square root, so only even roots give you plus and minus. Odd roots do not give you plus and minus. And as you can see on the picture, they only intersect at 0 and 1. So now, those are your A and B. We had to do this calculation. I mean, if you know it by looking at the picture, that's great. But we had to do this calculation because that's where you get your A and B. So now we are ready to set up our volume integral. You start with pi, and then we have 0 to 1. Well, that's going to be sweet calculation at the end. And now we have our fourth root of x squared minus x squared dx. We deal with algebra first. So when you square the fourth root, you will get a square root because fourth root is a quarter. Quarter times two is a half. So that's a square root. And then you have minus x squared dx. Now you might want to write this as x to the half because you can use your plus one formula, right, to integrate. So pi, oops, integrating now, uh, integral of uh, x to the 1 half is x to the 3 halves divided by 3, and you can put a half on top right away to deal with the double fraction faster, minus, and you have now x squared over 3. Well, this is awesome, right, 0 to 1, because both of these have a common denominator now. Uh, plug in 1, we get... 2 thirds minus 1 third, and then plug in 0 is just a whole bunch of zeros there, and the answer is pi over 3 units cubed, because whatever centimeters, inches uh, when you measure, and then you get to convert those units to something else. Yes, that's what I said. Please pay attention. It clearly says a cube. Look. See, that's a three. 
Thank you. So yes, x cubed over three, uh, calculated from zero to one. When we cube a three, I now mean, when we cube a one, it's one, so still one third. So it doesn't change the answer, but yes, it, it's supposed to be a cube. Great. You just write unit cube if the problem gives you, especially in my math lab, you see the homework, if they have inches or something, if you don't put inches cube, it's not going to be fantastic. If we don't put like a label, like there's no actual unit, is that like a final Sure, why not? It's a special request, so I don't want to disappoint you. So units squared or units cubed, or inches cubed, centimeters cubed, look. Your happiness is our primary concern here at RV Incorporated. So you request a point off. If there's no units cube, you get a point off for no units cube. If there was a pop quiz today, walking in, or tomorrow, because everyone is coming in tomorrow is Thursday. Uh, Tomorrow's Thursday, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I know we don't have a class. Uh, this would be the question. Rotation on x axis, cosine x. I believe I put this problem or the one with the sign that is cut at a different place on the exam two, three years ago. It was a mess. I said that two, two steps. So I am completely out of touch with reality. I don't know what's hard, it's easy. I can do the price code for You don't like it. So let's do it here. I'm not kidding, I feel like four students got it. Yeah, because formula. Let's see. She wants to solve this. Oh, it's good. Yes, it will be this method because it's only one function. Yeah. So you are using the very first formula. This is the last example for C3. After this, we are getting the break. So set it up and then integration. That's where the massacre came in. Because even if they were able to set it up, they couldn't integrate. 
Like the stuff they eat, apart from all this food. Okay. When you set this up, what do you get inside the integral? Cosine, cosine squared. And how do you integrate cosine squared? What do you do when you have cosine squared? I wrote that in blood on the day one. <laughs> right after the syllabus, I stressed that. So if you take a look at it, or maybe you didn't take notes, maybe you did, I don't know. Remember I listed some formulas and I said, if you don't know this, there is no other way to do it. Sine squared, cosine squared. It's called power reducing formulas, which is why there was a massacre on that exam because that identity from trick didn't click and obviously did not work well. So once you hit the integration part, I still want you to practice this. Cosine squared x is one plus cosine two x divided by two. You have to use that transformation to integrate cosine squared. There is no other way to do it. And 